Hey guys, it's Glenn here. Um, you guys probably know me best from VH1's Brook Knows Best. And I'm here to tell you guys, it gets better. And it gets so much better. My parents uh, were farmers. I grew up on a farm milking cows. Um, and I started having feelings, I guess, when, you know, in my teens, when I started thinking about sex and when the guys were always talking about girls, I kind of was more interested in them. <laughs> and I found myself having a lot of crushes on the guys. I, at the time, was confused. I was closeted. Um, I was just a really nice kid. And from being so nice, I got picked on. You know, in high school, I had been picked on so bad uh, in the hallways all the time, just like in Glee, except maybe there was no slushy. But I really had been picked on so bad. I had gotten, you know, called every name in the book, you know, fag, queer. What are some of the other words nowadays? And I was not about to, because of where I was from, I was not about to tell anybody that I was gay. And in, at the time, it hurt. And to be called it out loud in front of other people or in front of other friends, or at the time, my girlfriend. You know, it was, it was something that today I realize has made me a stronger person. So you will become a stronger person from this. You will become a better person from this. Um, I gotta tell you guys that I did many times think about suicide, I tried to commit suicide, and it was just because I felt so alone, and I felt like there was nobody out there to talk to, and I cried a lot, and my parents were always like, why are you crying? And they just thought that I was, you know, sad because of maybe I was getting in a fight with my girlfriend, or uh, something that, that was going on between me and my parents. And coming out to my parents, <laughs> they did not understand it. They did not. They cried. They pretty much acted like I had died. Um, they were crying so hard. They, they at one point had taken me to a doctor. They wanted me to go to the doctor and I said, okay, I'll, I'll go to the doctor if that's going to make you feel better. I'll go to a doctor. And uh, they took me to the family doctor in our town in Michigan. And I sat down with him and he asked me all these questions. And then he brought my, my parents in and sat them down and goes, Roger and Paulette, your son is gay. And I just, I remember my mother was like, no, no, like I had just died. And my father was so upset and crying and my father never cries. And I was like, are you serious? It is not like I've killed anybody. It's not like that. I love them to death. And that was their way of dealing with it. They offered me money. They offered me a home. They offered me so many things if I could just change my way. But of course, they don't realize, and they didn't realize at the time, I was born this way. This is the way I was born. And so it took some time for them to deal with it. And it has been a long journey for them, but I love them. And they loved me, and I knew they loved me. And it was gonna take some time to understand and get through this and and understand that their son their oldest son was gay and it, there's all different ways to handle this and there's gonna be all different ways that your family handles it and you know eventually um, I moved and I went to college and I got to finally experience what it was like to be with a man and and it was everything and more than uh, what I expected. And I have been so happy. I've always been a happy person. Um, but again, in high school, I did have a rough time. And I was really lonely and felt alone. My parents are my biggest fans now. I am in a relationship. I bring my boyfriend home back to Claire, Michigan, where I grew up. There's a couple movies out there that you should see. 
that might help you get through it. And I know you're going to probably have to sneak the videos. It's a movie called Prayers for Bobby. Okay. And then also it's a, there's another movie documentary called So the Bible Tells, Tells Him So. Tells Me So. Something like that. And they're both really good films that have to deal with sexuality and religion. Oh, and now and that I'm grown up and I'm in this whole new world and a world where it's accepted and places where it's accepted, you're not alone. Okay? You're not. Just wait it out. And eventually, when you come out to your family, when you come out to your brothers and sisters, your friends, you will find out who your friends are. You will find out how your family is going to deal with it. And it's going to be different. And it's going to take some time. But you are going to be strong. You choose to be a victim or not be a victim of this. You are leading by an example. So that's my whole thing all the time. I feel like I need to lead by an example. No matter what they would say or what they would do, I would just love them back. You guys will get out into the world. You guys will discover yourself. You will find your family of friends, people who support you and love you for who you are. It will happen. It will. And I get emails all the time from you guys. I get messages on Facebook and MySpace, hundreds of them a week, and I know how hard it is out there. You know, now being a gay man and out, you know, I live in a place where it's very accepted, you know, in Miami, Florida. You know, I've lived in New York City, you know, I go to LA a lot, San Francisco. There's so many places out there in the world where you are accepted, where you can be loved. It gets better. I went on to become a famous choreographer. The New York Times dubbed me a dancing entrepreneur. Nelly Furtado, Usher, Maya, Pink, Whitney Houston, Mark Anthony, Jimmy Buffett. You know, I've danced and choreographed for these people. I've even danced and choreographed for Michael Jackson and got an Emmy nomination for, you know, choreography in a TV special. You know, and I even got to be me on a reality show and say, yes, I'm a 10 gay and this is who I am. And, and that was in itself so freeing. Now I'm in the entertainment business and it's been so amazing. It gets so much better. And now I, I get to go to red carpet events. Uh, I'm on covers of magazines. I get to get my picture taken. I get to feel like what it was like to be kind of a celebrity for a little while. And it's been so great. And to think that I would have not have been able to find my destiny, to be able to live my dreams. I teach master classes around the world and my whole thing is dream big and don't give up on your dreams. And you are the captain of your destiny. No one else, nobody else. Never be ashamed of who you are. You know, never be ashamed of who you are. You are special. You are so special. So get ready for an awesome ride because it gets better. It will get better. And I'm here for you. If you ever need me, please Facebook me. My name, Glenn Packard. MySpace me. Whatever it is you need to. Twitter. Get a hold of me. I will keep helping you through it. I'm wishing you luck. Good luck out there. And enjoy your adventures. I love you.